Hey everybody, welcome to today's daily devotion. I'm glad that you joined with us for this short time in God's Word from the Treasury of Daily Prayer. Today we're going to hear about God's grace and we're going to hear a continuation of uh, the conversation between Peter and Cornelius uh, that you started to hear yesterday with Pastor Cowell and we're going to hear Peter's uh, response today in the book of Acts. And so our reading today comes from Acts chapter 10. And it says, So Peter opened up his mouth and said, Truly, I understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. As for the word that he sent to Israel, preaching good news of peace through Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all, you yourselves know what happened throughout all Judea. Beginning from Galilee, after he had the baptism that John proclaimed, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and made him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who had been chosen by God as witnesses, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one appointed by God to be judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. While Peter was still saying these things, the Holy Spirit fell on all who heard the word. And the believers from among the circumcised who had come with Peter were amazed because the gifts of the Holy Spirit were poured out even on the Gentiles. For they were hearing them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter declared, Can anyone withhold water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And they asked him to remain with them for a few days. Our writing for today comes from one of the early church fathers, Ambrose of Milan. And he says, Grace has more power than nature. Yet so far we have only spoken of the grace of the prophet's blessing. But if the blessing of man had such power to change nature in the Old Testament miracles, what are we to say of the divine consecration where the very words of the Lord and Savior operate? For the word of Christ makes the sacrament that you have received what it is. But if the word of Elijah had power to bring down fire from heaven, shall not the word of Christ have the power to change the nature of the elements? You read concerning the creation of the world. He spoke, and they were made. He commanded, and they were created. Shall not the word of Christ, which was able to create from nothing, be able to change things that are already into what they were not? But why make use of arguments? Let us use examples. The examples he gives, and by the examples of the incarnation, prove the truth of that mystery. Did the course of nature proceed as usual when the Lord Jesus was born of Mary? If we look to the usual course, a woman ordinarily conceives after connection with a man, yet his body was born of the virgin. Why do you seek the order of nature in the body of Christ, seeing that the Lord Jesus himself was born of a virgin, not according to nature? The true flesh of Christ was crucified and buried, so the sacrament of his body is truly his body. The Lord Jesus himself proclaims, This is my body. Before the blessing of the heavenly words, is sp- it is spoken of as bread. After the consecration, the body is proclaimed. So too with the blood. And you say, Amen. That is, it is true. Let the heart within confess what the mouth utters. Let the soul feel what the voice speaks. Our hymn verse today is from a hymn that I enjoy. It's a very uh, festival sounding hymn. It's called, O Day Full of Grace. It's found in the Lutheran service book, number 503. For Christ bore our sins, and not his own, when he on the cross was hanging. And then he arose and moved the stone that we unto him belonging might join with angelic hosts to raise our voices in endless singing. Let us pray. Almighty God, you chose the Virgin Mary to be the mother of your Son and made known through her your gracious regard for the poor and lowly and despised. 
Grant that we may receive your word in humility and faith, and so be made one with Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you always, and I pray that you have a great uh, 4th of July weekend um, and that you stay safe.